Can we hook our brains to computers? To communicate with our minds, control prosthetics, or even replay memories. These film plots that capture people's imaginations now seem to be a step closer to reality. This video has over six million views on YouTube. It's a monkey with a brain implant playing a video game with nothing but its mind. The name of the technology is Brain Computer Interface. To grasp the idea behind how it works, I visited a company in Hangzhou City. And was welcomed by an employee who shook my hand with a robot arm. I tried using a prototype, a smart band recorded biosignal patterns of my hand in various positions, after which the robot hand instantly started to mirror my movements. To demonstrate that it was indeed my brain that's controlling it, Mr. Joe proposed an experiment. This became more of an exercise of the mind than the arm. After a bit more practice, I got better at it. Now, if I really concentrate, I can open this robot fist just by thinking about it. Then we had a mini car race. The speed depended on how hard you focus your mind. Such is the basic idea behind brain-computer interface wearable devices. Record biosignals from the body, interpret them, and turn them into machine commands. But these wearables represent only one direction the technology is taking. My late grandmother fell victim to Parkinson's disease, a debilitating brain disorder that can reduce the strongest of people to someone unable to control the most basic of movements. There are high hopes that brain-computer interface technologies could offer a way to help Parkinson's patients. For BCI to help treat more complex brain diseases, some experts believe we have to dig deeper, literally, by using brain implants. You believe implants are the future as opposed to wearable devices that are not right. intrusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me, means wearable kind of uh, first version, <laughs> you know, something to start, but it's not enough. Because actually the brain is protected. You have skin, you have skull, you have uh, many layers to come inside. I'm talking to other companies to see how invasive implants work. This is an industry forum dedicated to brain-computer interface, and this year is its first edition. It is a testament to the fact that the technology is getting more established in China. The majority of BCI products exhibited here are wearables. But I talked to several companies that focused on implants. Why do you choose invasive implants over wearables? That's a pretty visible cut on the skull there. Another company makes a contraption that looks quite a bit more aggressive. These two electrodes are connected to a microprocessor fixed on the skull. Mr. Sun's head is planted with one of them. He's been suffering from epileptic seizures and had developed tolerance for medicines. So he volunteered at a clinical trial in Zhejiang in 2021 and received the implant. 
The contraption is charged three times a week wirelessly by a cap linked to a power bank. What's the process like of getting an approval for clinical trials? 我们一开始的话是做了大量的离体的样本的试验，随即呢，我们会做了小鼠的动物试验，然后会在狗狗或者是猪身上做一些活体的试验，是亚洲第一例植入，然后也是国内第一例植入。When I asked about future challenges, many companies and academic experts gave me a surprising answer. One of the biggest hurdles is neither the hardware nor software, but basic research. 现在呢，也是还受制于呢，就是说脑科学基础研究的一些个限制，就是真正现在在这个科学上，就是对大脑理解多少，因为深层脑区的很多功能呢，和它具体的执行原理呢，我们还不是特别清楚。这个可能就需要科研界，呃，做出更多的，做出了更多的工作和努力。Yeah, because actually the brain is complex, and the brain was a kind of taboo, and little research. Was in the brain before recent 15, 20 years. People was doing a lot of work with brain, but no, nothing invasive. The long-term effects of these early successes are being closely monitored. The complexity of the brain is considered one of the final frontiers in understanding the human body. This field has a long way to go, but it's hard not to get excited. About what it could achieve in the future.